If you're a Muslim man in your 20s and you know you need to be investing from early, then this video is for you. I'm not too far out of my 20s myself, but I'm going to show you exactly what I would do if I was still there. I'm talking about specific percentages, proportions, everything you need to know to get started right now. And this is going to be eye-opening, especially because I'm coming at it from a Muslim's perspective. And by the way, Salaam Alaikum, I'm Amin, an internet business guy, coach, and author who wrote the book on Islamic masculinity, The Shepherd's Way. And I'm based here in Istanbul. So the first thing we need to think about is our whole approach to investing, because this is going to impact everything that happens afterwards. And it's going to depend on a lot of different factors. But the main thing I'm going to talk about here is your risk appetite. How willing are you to be risky and therefore get bigger gains as well? And number two, what you actually believe about the world. Because what you believe about the world and about reality will actually impact how you invest. And I'll show you the details of that as we go. So when it comes to risk, while you're in your 20s, you're very early in your investing journey. And therefore, you can afford any losses, any loss of gains that happen along the way. So that means your risk for appetite should definitely be higher. Now, how high you want to go, it depends on you, on your situation, your stability, your career, stuff like that. But generally, you want to edge towards the higher risk side because any money that you lose now, inshallah, you've got your whole life to make up for it if Allah gives you that time to make up for it. This means we're going to invest a little bit less in the low risk stuff like gold, like silver, like sukuk or bonds and move to more high risk stuff like maybe crypto, maybe some stocks, maybe investing in starting your own business. When it comes to being a Muslim investor specifically and actually believing in what Allah tells us about the reality of the world, that is going to have a huge impact on how we invest and it's going to help us so much inshallah. Because for example, we know from Allah and his Prophet Sallallahu specifically that charity is the best investment you can make. You're investing in the next life and it's got a guaranteed return. Allah will multiply the money that you give in his cause. And so charity is something that we should see as an investment and inshallah, that will actually encourage us to give more and more in charity because it's an investment and because we believe this is the right thing to do with the money that Allah gave us in the end. We didn't get it. Allah got it for us. Also, another part of being a Muslim investor is investing in your own development and your own training and education. Because if we have the right intention that I'm bettering myself for my family, for building my wealth, for building that wealth to help the ummah, we have all these good intentions behind it, then we expect Allah to reward us for that as well. So when we're putting a certain amount of our investment portfolio in our own development, then we see that truly as an investment in rewards. And no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, it will bring huge financial rewards for you as well. And likewise, we're always going to look into the stuff we're investing in because we want to avoid any sign of any haram in our money that we're making, that we're feeding ourselves with, that we're feeding our wives with, our kids with. We want to avoid that completely. And then when we do that hard work over the research and making sure that it's halal, we expect reward from Allah and we expect there to be more barakah in the money that we actually do make. And this is another key point for Muslim investors out there, that we don't just look at the quantity of money, we look at the quality of money. And how do we kind of measure the quality of money, right? We just see numbers in a bank account. One pound is one pound, surely. No, it's not. Because a thousand pounds or dollars that have no barakah or low barakah in it, it could end up getting wasted, lost, or spent in a way that causes us to get further away from Allah and maybe sin. But money that has a lot of barakah in it will go a very long way and it will give us more than expected and bring us closer to Allah. So these are some of the signs of how we can tell if money has barakah in it or it doesn't. And we should always be aiming to have more and more and more barakah in it because it's just more efficient. And later in the video, I'll get into some of the haram halal decisions I've made in investing. But our overall approach and mindset when it comes to investing is very important. So that's why I wanted to cover that first. So our approach is that because we're younger, we're taking a bit more risk. And also because we're Muslim, we're going to be focused on definitely always having charity in our portfolio, investing with the right intentions and looking for money that has barakah in it. All right, so now let's get into the exact numbers and the meat and potatoes that I know you're looking for. So the way I would do it is mostly by percentage of income. The more I earn, the more I'm going to put into that. The less I earn, it will get reduced in the same way. And I just set it as a percentage. So out of the total money that comes in every month, I would put 10% of that towards savings. Just build up some savings. First, you want an emergency savings. So it's like about $1,000, $1,000 your car breaks down, you need some furniture, you need something, someone has a medical bill, you've got some money set aside for that. You want to save that away first. After that's there, then you just want to put aside again the 10% and keep building that up until you've got a few months of expenses there because you never know what's going to happen. Next, I would put another 10% of my income aside for investing, for what we would call traditional investing, like put it into certain investments that I expect would bring me money back. And then another 10% I would put towards 
charity. I'm going to say Allah gave me 100% of this money. I'm definitely giving 10% of that away for the cause of Allah. And then finally, in terms of investing, I would put another 10% aside for my learning and development. So we've got 40% that we've actually allocated for investing in different ways. But now look, this might seem a bit idealistic. You're thinking 40%, how could I possibly put that aside and then live off 60%? Well, let's do a bit of reality check to see if we're on the right lines or not. So let's say I'm 25, I'm earning like a decent amount, like maybe 35,000 pounds a year. And after taxes, that's going to end up being 2,533 pounds per month. Okay, now let's take away that 40% that we're going to invest and we're left with 60%, which ends up being about 1,000. £1,500, which is what we've got left to live on. Of course, it might be a little bit tight, especially at this stage in life where you're not earning as much as you would like. But ultimately, it depends where you live, how expensive rent is and stuff like that. Especially if you're living with your parents or you're sharing or something like that, you could definitely make this happen. But ultimately, it just depends kind of on your situation. Like I looked at a medium price city like Birmingham in the UK, and it said you need about £2,000 to live on per month there as a minimum. But they were including a lot of things that we don't necessarily need. Therefore, we might be able to make this £1,500 work. And you've got to keep in mind that we're investing now in the early days to make the later days easier. And so if your wife, you know, is not really on board with this, if she's struggling with it, or if you're getting married and you're telling her straight up front, like, look, I invest a lot of money. And that's not so we live uncomfortably today. It's so we live okay today, but in the future, things will be very, very good. And this is the wise thing to do for you, for our family, for our kids, for everyone. So yeah, living on 60% of your income, if it is possible, then definitely make that happen. If it's a little bit difficult, still make it happen. And if it seems really impossible, then of course, some of those 10%, we can turn them into 5%. But the charity one, I want you to really stick to that and make sure that 10% of your income is going to charity. But straight away, it's amazing. You are now investing and you're investing a good chunk of your money. And this is going to definitely play out well for you in the medium and long term. While most people are not investing in their 20s, you're investing in your stability by giving 10% to saving. You're investing in the akhirah and even your financial stability as well by putting 10% to charity. You're investing in your development so you can make more money in the future, so you can become an asset to the ummah in the future by putting 10% to your development, your education, your training. And of course, you're putting that last 10% into what people would call traditional investments. But the question is, what are those traditional investments? What would I do for that 10%, that portion? Okay, so this is how I personally would split that 10% up. I would put 10% of it in gold or silver, about 30% in Bitcoin, and then I would put the remaining 60% in some sort of real estate vehicle, whether it's crowdsourced, whether someone has a rent-to-rent -rent opportunity, or if you really just have to save up a little bit to then go in with other investors on a property with, say, five or £10,000. And let me break down why I'm doing this. So the 10% that goes to gold or silver, this is just so that I have something that is not affected by inflation, and it's just preserving that bit of wealth, so it's a little bit like savings as well. And it's something that I can physically hold that people cannot take away from me. The bank can't lock me out. The crypto exchange can't take that away from me or I lose my key or whatever it is. I've got that physically with me. And it's 10%. It's a small amount. Now, Bitcoin, of course, it has a lot of volatility in it. It is one of those higher risk things. And we're young, so we're doing that kind of thing. It also has potential for huge upside. And at the same time, to be honest with you, there are very few investments that I found to be accessible to most people. And that's also why this is here as well. And then finally, the real estate side of things. This is something that's not so high risk. It's more medium risk. And it has a good opportunity to make you some good money in the medium and long term. So that's why I've put that there. Now, how do you get into crowdfunded real estate? Well, there are a few options out there. There's Yielders in the UK, although I looked into that and I found that the amount that they take as a service fee was too high for me and the returns were too low. Then there's something called Smart Crowd, which is in the UAE and you could buy slices of properties for as low as £100. And then, for example, I came across an opportunity recently where the minimum investment was £10,000. And so if you're saving up over years, you could put something like that down. You could also go in with your brother or your father or your friend to put that 10K together. And that's something you might build up and save over time. So you're putting that 60% over the 10% aside for the real estate. Even if you're not spending it every month, you're building up so that when the opportunity comes, you've got some cash there to put it into it. So yeah, that's what I would do personally. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, where's the sukuk, which is like Islamic bonds? Where are the stocks? Where's the other stuff, the normal stuff that everyone talks about? Well, to be honest with you, I really couldn't get over the haram factor. Pretty much all of these companies, they have a certain portion of their income that is haram, that is from riba or from something that is illegal in Islam. And I looked into, this is where the research comes in, I looked into the reasoning as to why many scholars have said that it's actually okay to invest in it as long as you purify the income you get from it and it's lower than like 5% of the company's income. I looked into the reasoning behind that 
And I personally couldn't be convinced. And so I just said, look, I'm staying away from stocks. So that's why I have no stocks in there. When it comes to sukuk or bonds, these are things that are lower risk, lower income. And so as a young investor, you're probably not going to be that interested in that. I would personally do quite a bit of research on if that is even halal or not. Although sukuk are called Islamic bonds, but not everything that's labeled Islamic is, of course, Islamic. So I would just look into that. But like I said, it's kind of on the lower side of risk and lower side of reward as well. So probably not relevant for a 20 something year old investor. Even crypto was something that I considered haram for a long time. I was following the fatwa of a certain scholar. And since then, a lot more information has come out. And so I looked into it recently and I was okay with Bitcoin specifically. Other coins and Ethereum and stuff like that, I need to look into that if I'm comfortable with it. But right now I feel comfortable with Bitcoin at least. So that's why I've put that in my portfolio. So yeah, that's quite an important thing for me to say because if you're investing in anything, you need to know the ruling on it. Is it halal? Is it haram? If you have any doubt, of course, look into it further until you find comfort in the ruling that you found. Because wallah bro, if you don't invest in something for Allah's sake, then know that Allah has prepared something even better for you. Even if that thing ended up being halal, the fact that you didn't invest in it because of your fear of Allah, then you have no worries about the return you're going to get on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and inshallah in the dunya in the form of more barakah in the money that you do have. So again, we're looking at that quality, not just quantity of money. My biggest and most successful investment in my life has been investing in my own development, my own learning, my own business acumen. And that's actually how I make all of my money today. So if you're interested in how I'd get started in business, if I was starting from zero today, then watch this video next to see how exactly I would do it. I'm talking about the exact steps, what I would do and how I would do it. So check that out right now.